All right, everybody. Here I am. Am I here? Hello. Hello. All right. Okay. Uh, welcome for guests and visitors. My name is Steve Parley, club president. I'd like to welcome you, all, welcome you all to the 26th meeting of the 47th year of the Dublin Worthington Rotary Club. I'd like to remind everybody that we are still in Worthington, Ohio. It never changes every week. Worthington, Ohio. <laughs> and the city does currently have a mask mandate in place. So since nobody's eating, I guess that won't be an issue. We can just keep our masks on. Uh, now, today's invocation and Pledge of Allegiance will be offered by George Norris. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in our life. As we battle this worldwide virus, let us exercise the gift of free will that you gave us. And at the same time, let others exercise their gift of free will. Let us all do this agreeably. We pray for those who are suffering today from whatever cause, and we pray that we individually and as a Rotary Club can help with those suffering. Let us also remember that we are always an example and teacher to others. So let us always act out of love. For these things we say, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, George. Um, slight miscalculation, maybe on my part. <laughs> Hopefully, some somebody from the Sergeants Committee can fill in. I believe it was supposed to be Rich Goldberg, but I don't see him today. Is he online or his own? No, I don't think so. Uh, Alan, yes, sir. you want to be a sergeant? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nothing. What a mama spot. Nothing like preparation. Huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I go by what's on the sheet. <laughs> Holy mackerel. What am I going to do now? Let's see. Uh, I heard we had a great rah on last week, or a couple weeks ago. Yes. Who was there? If you weren't there, toss it a buck. How's that? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, does anybody know we've got an event coming up? What is it? Super Bowling. Super Bowling. Who's coming? Uh, if your hand's not up, I'm going to use throwing a buck. <laughs> well, I'm going, by the way. And finally, since I'm on such short notice, um, who's got a happy dollar? I'm all out of order. I don't have a thing. Somebody's got to be happy in here. Anybody online happy? Uh, Who else happy? <laughs> I know that Jim Farmer is going to make an announcement. But like, I'm happy because we had a great week in bringing in new sponsors. We had four new sponsors this four, four new sponsors this week, and one of them was an outside business. So thanks to um, Jennifer Bass, Jeff Axon Hernandez, uh, Roger Johnson for Axon's car dealership, Anderson. And, and Anderson said, Anderson. folks, Anderson. Said Anderson. Folks, yeah. Yeah, for asking the best, <laughs> that's my punchline, <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't for me. I'm gonna say it different. <laughs> you know, I was gonna say. That uh, he just sacrificed and drinking so much beer that he, he guilted his, his brewery into being a sponsor. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and sponsoring a team, too. So that was, was really important. Right. 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 Cool. Drink them under the table. Uh, <laughs> any, other, uh, any other happy dollars, Jim? Yeah, I'm happy that. Uh, uh, all my thund thunder was just taken from me, and I don't have to make an announcement now. But we, have, we, have, we have done 18 of these sponsorships. There's only 12 left. So those of you who are planning to do it, please get on board. Perfect. Uh, who else? Who's happy? Steve? I'm happy that uh, Ro has been helping plan a family vacation for me in May, and then another anniversary vacation in October. 
I'm just very pleased to have her. That's, that's a lot of vacation. That's even like two dollars. <laughs> 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 making a lot of money. All right, start to see some happy people here. Who else? Who else is happy? Another one? Yeah. Start out. Jesus, money too. And, 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 uh, well, at the risk of having you throw food or rocks at me, why well, I'm happy for 74 degrees, and I'll be glad to pay the dollar. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> 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 We're interrupting. This is a little bit more of a commercial, but you know, like this year, for about the 31st year, you know, we're having the Worthington in Worthington Martin Luther King celebration, and unfortunately, this year again. As it was last year, it's going to be virtual. But you know, if you can go on to the uh, the city of Worthington website and you can see the link. Yeah. Awesome. That sounds like a great happy dollar. Thank Bro, you. Thank you. So I was going to say, I think some of you know, this past weekend I was with our Worthy, our Rotary Youth Exchange students. Our district has nine outbound students wow. uh throughout wow. this fall, and we are interviewing next week for short-term exchange. Um, so we'll hopefully have a few more. And we spent Saturday downtown at the Columbus Library. Uh, our club provided the students with snacks and drinks and things, and I brought those down. And we had a great time, and there were a group of kids. And Roger Johnson's daughter, granddaughter, is one of our outbound students. Great. Wow. Wow. Well, Roger should be booming an up a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> Roger, are you out there? I don't see them there. Well, is it? Yes, I have yeah. one. Okay. So I got very, very lucky. I got to vacation on a cruise um, over the holidays. And I was in Costa Maya, and right at the exit at the port, there's a rotary booth. Wow. And I was so impressed. So I stopped and got my passport printed from the rotary. So oh, wow. <laughs> I was impressed you were down there. Any uh, anybody happy online today besides Alan? All right, one final question. Who in this room owns horses? <laughs> Your hand is not raised and you haven't oh. met the limit through another dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? just a brief update about our meeting space. So this is the second week in a row that we have not been able to get lunch. Uh, and it is because Trillian is short staffed due to the surge in COVID at the, at the facility. So, you know, we're, we're hopeful that maybe next week they will be able to get us lunch again. But uh, with that said, I know there's been, you know, differing opinions about this space and lunch in general. So we know what the problem is. If anybody has a solution, whether that's a space or a way to get food, uh, please see me. I'd love to. I'd love to talk about it. Just as a reminder, the committee did meet maybe 18 months ago to look into different spaces, and most of them wanted a room charge. They wanted 20 dollars a head. So it's not that the research has not been done, but it hasn't been done recently. So again, if anybody has any options, please please come talk to me. All right, Mr. Hey, Steve. Uh, yes, Al. Uh, I just wanted to comment as a member of the Zoom committee. This is the first time I've been on this end of the Zoom. And I'm impressed with the uh, fairly good sound pickup from anyone who is facing toward the camera when they speak. Roe was uh, picked up quite well. So if uh, whenever somebody speaks in the audience, if they look toward the camera, I think we'll, we'll hear them pretty well. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up. All right, Mr. Farmer. Okay, February 5, the Super Bowl on Saturday. We're doing so well on the lane sponsorships, we're going to shift gears a little bit. We're looking for four people to make presentations at Westerville noon on Thursday, New Albany, uh, breakfast on Wednesday, Gahanna noon on Wednesday, and Grove City, which is uh, in the morning on Thursday. When Wixel is a uh, Taking names, uh, if you can make any one of those, please uh, talk to him. Uh, and then secondly, we want to start focus on signing up teams. I think we have about seven or eight teams that signed up already. Uh, but now the push is to get all 30 teams signed up if we can do it. So everybody who's thinking about it, uh, please go online to Eventbrite or contact me, either one. And let's, uh, let's all show up on February 5th. Thank you. Thank you, Jim.
Teresa? So my announcement is a special uh, meeting that we're going to have on J January 26. It's a Wednesday noon lunch. It's going to be held at a great location, the Dublin Rec Center. So we will not be here that day. And the special uh, collaboration of four clubs coming together who have president elects that are all female. We decided to um, honor the, the females and, and go with the international rotary theme this year of empowering girls. So we have a, a terrific speaker, Dr. Lisa Hinkleman, that uh, has done a lot of research and study in that space. And she's gonna be our featured speaker. And we have lunches catered by Freedom a la carte, which if anybody is aware of them, they are um, a female-based organization as well, um, taking women out of the streets from sex trafficking and getting them employable. So it's gonna be a terrific lunch. It's cash only $15 at the door. And uh, there is a uh, email coming out with registration links, hopefully today. Fantastic. So, thank you. Thank you. Got a lot of exciting things happening in the next 30 days. Oh, and we're gonna limit the number of people attendees to 80. Yes, unlimited Zoom, I think. Well, 100 on Zoom, but 80 in person. Right. Fantastic. Hey, Teresa, what was the date again? The 26th, 26, 26, two weeks yeah. from today. Okay. So it's normal bat time, different bat place. Um, right. Only yeah. eight of us can go. Eighty. Well, eighty in person. Yeah. Uh, How do you write this? It's coming in an email today. You'll see an invite. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Um, and just as another reminder, the 125 Club. I'm not going to go through my whole spiel, but Polio Plus annual fund. Get it together. Talk to Jennifer. Go to Rotary Direct. I think I, I looked up yesterday. I think there's like eight cases left in the world. Yeah, and if, if you do that for me, it needs to be on your invoice that comes out the end of this week. The April invoice is a little late for me to invoice you. If it's not on this invoice, you can just do it online, which is also not very difficult. Fantastic. Thank you, Jennifer. All righty. Any other announcements? Seeing none, and I think we're ready for our program. And I believe Mr. Hansen will introduce. Our speaker, Jennifer Hansen, no relation, has always loved horses, but she never owned one growing up. Uh, she attended Brown University, the College of Worcester, and eventually secured a a degree in law from Ohio State University. It wasn't until law school that Jennifer met her first horse, the name of Daisy. She started volunteering for her church barn party with Daisy, helping kids experience the joy of horses, and it was their enthusiasm that gave Jennifer the idea to start Dreams on Horseback, the NGO that she, uh, for which she is currently executive director. It began as an outreach program to challenge children to think outside of the boundaries of their neighborhoods. Uh, it has grown exponentially over the last 18 years. Now, Jennifer still keeps her hands in law, working for the Ohio Judicial Conference for her full-time job, but her full-time job is really serving as executive director of Dreams on Horseback. This is a premier accredited therapeutic organization serving thousands of children with special needs and serving military personnel and their families. It offers unique course programs in Central Ohio. And with that, please join me in welcoming Jennifer. Thank you. Oh, should I put this on? Oh, sure. All right, can you hear me? Yes, that's oh, good, thank you. Thank you, Dave, I appreciate it. All right. Well, it's my privilege uh, to get to speak with all of you today. Thank you so much for the invitation to share a little bit about this uh, pretty special organization called Dreams on Horseback. Um, and I'd love to share the dream of Dreams on Horseback. And this is a dream that engages the power of the horse to be able to help people improve their lives. 
Um, as Dave mentioned, what began as an outreach uh, organization um, for inner city children has really blossomed into a vibrant public therapeutic center that is located in Gehanna, um, just about 20 minutes on the east side from here, 20 minutes on the east side of Columbus. And the center has been carved by the calls for help from our community, calls that we were privileged to be able to answer. As Dave mentioned, we work with more than 3,500 participants every single year. And what do we do? People often ask, um, is it a pony ride? And it's not. What we do is we really provide hope. Whether it is hope for a parent, oh, let me see if I can move this forward. Oh, there we go. Um, whether it's hope for a parent whose child is lost in the silence of autism. We provide hope for a veteran who can't figure out how to reconnect with their kids once they return from service. We provide hope for the son of a parent with Alzheimer's as they watch them slowly disappear. And we provide hope for a parent whose child has spastic paraplegia, who can maintain strength in their legs so that they are not confined to a wheelchair. But as they say, uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, and it's so difficult for me to describe what it is we do. So I wanted to share a little taste of some of the magic of our programs. So I can't see on my screen. How do I do? It's like there's really nice people here and it's lots of fun. Like I can't walk for a long time, I can't stand for a long time. The difference that, you know, this this program has made, it, it there's just multifaceted. There's, you know, the physical benefits that the, the horse entails, but just the emotional benefits of, of being around the horses because of what we're offering at this center, we're actually changing not only that child's life, but the entire family's life. That's pretty powerful. He's my eight-year-old son. He um, was diagnosed with classic autism at the age of two. He's also nonverbal. Riding a horse is helping him with his balance. It's helping him with core strength. It's helping him follow directions and being attentive. Well, they can do things on horseback that they can't do when they're on the ground. Um, they can do things that their friends can do. I've had kids come in who've, you know, never said a single word in their life and they get on the horse um, and the first word they say is horse. Can you kick, kick to go? This is the holy right. grail of working with horses, that you're working with horses doing what they do best, which is reading the nonverbal cues and then interacting with clients. But to see her on there, to see her smiling, to s it means the world to me. We provide them a safe haven. We provide them a place where they can just be themselves, where they're treated with respect, compassion, dignity. It's, it's absolutely changed my life and my son's life. We're helping uh, participants ages age 3 to 83 um, in our Alzheimer's group. We are helping to rehabilitate our military veterans and active duty military personnel. This is one of the most therapeutic things I've experienced as a veteran. We have 18 part-time staff, one full-time staff member. Uh, we have 165 volunteers who donate hundreds and hundreds of hours of their time every single year. We work with more than 3,500 participants every single year, and every participant receives at least 50% scholarship. So without those community partners, we would not be able to provide these wonderful programs. It's up to each one of us to improve the lives of our community, um, and that's what the heart of this center is all about. It's helped me so it could help other kids, and I want it to help other kids. One in 59 children are diagnosed on the autism spectrum. This is a 15% increase from just two years ago. 
There's a growing need for innovative therapies. And the impact that we see in our horse programs is absolutely remarkable. You heard me talk about Ava, um, or actually I talked about a student who said their first word to a horse. We see this every single day where horses can make a and the interpersonal connection and help us make inroads when other therapies, traditional therapies cannot. Since we started offering therapeutic riding lessons uh, just five years ago, five years ago, we have uh, jumped from offering six hours of riding to 64 students every single week. We are the only uh, premier accredited facility in Franklin County offering this type of program. Thanks to the efforts of one of our uh, volunteers, um, we started offering uh, programs for our military personnel, um, active duty and veteran military seven years ago. Now 65 veterans and active duty military come to our centers every single month. In fact, Friday nights at our center is dedicated just to military personnel. Last summer, we provided two summer camps just for children of military veterans, and the camp filled up within five minutes. All of our programs are offered to our military personnel and their children completely free of charge. In fact, um, we started just by offering programs for our active duty and veteran military and very quickly got the uh, request to include family members because we do believe that the entire family feels the wounds of service to our country. Seventeen years ago, we were asked to launch a program for our students who were at risk of not graduating from, from high school. Gehanna approached us and they had been working with another facility that unfortunately had to be closed down because it was not built to commercial code. Some of you may have heard of it. It was called Eagle's Nest. It was located down in Canal Winchester and all of the Columbus schools were sending students who were at risk to that center because they really found that some non-traditional education opportunities were allowing that center to be able to make some inroads, not just in personal development, but also in encouraging them to get involved in um, or to be more engaged in the traditional uh, subjects at school. We launched this program for our high school students who really do struggle in a traditional education setting. We're teaching them some interpersonal skills, things like emotion control, um, how you work with your peers, how you talk to a supervisor while they're helping to take care of our horses. We get some real time opportunities to be able to teach them some of the life lessons that they're not able to learn at home um, or they're not willing to listen to at school. We are really proud that over the 17 years, we have a 92% success rate. Our goals are first to get the kids to go to school. They cannot come to our center unless they attend school. They come five days a week in the afternoons. And then our goal after we get them there is to help give them the, uh, the skills to be able to graduate and then be able to get a job and keep a job post-graduation. <clears throat> In addition to these program services, we're really proud to be a leader in research and education. We're so lucky to live in such a vibrant community as Columbus. In 2011, the Ohio State University asked us to uh, conduct a first of its kind study into the impact of equine therapy on the early onset of Alzheimer's. And so we happily got involved in this project. Um, we did find that, in fact, there was a positive impact um, on reducing cortisol levels or stress levels of the participants um, who were involved in this study. And this actually resulted in us offering now a weekly Alzheimer's program with the Sunrise Senior Senior Center uh, located in Gehanna. We've been involved with Ohio State a couple different projects since then. We've also worked with their biomechanical engineering programs to create adaptive equipment to help kids who have struggle with mobility to be able to work on some of that muscle, um, um, push, uh, to be able to help flex their muscles, to be able to then be able to use their muscles more readily in walking because they're willing to exercise those on our horses. As I mentioned, we are a premier accredited center, which means we are accredited by the most stringent worldwide um, organization for uh, both how we are conducting our business and how we're supporting all of our uh, participants. Again, we are so grateful to be able to be located in such a central location just 25 minutes from here. 
our vision for our programs is that no one is ever turned away for any financial reasons. As I mentioned, um, we start all of our programs um, at 50% scholarship. Um, every single dollar that we fundraise is given only to programs, not a single penny is applied to overhead. Um, and that's something that we're really proud of. As I did mention also, um, all of our military personnel receive all of our services completely free of charge. This program is one that I love so much and I did want to see if I could, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, there should be one more. Dear Philippe. Dear Nuffy. I'm especially thankful for Twilight. You have taught me so much at Dreams on Horseback. While riding, grooming, and talking with him, I am my happiest. I think you are cute when you rub your slimy tongue against my hand and you cheer me up when you rub your neck on me. When I tell people about you, I feel warm inside because I'm inspiring others to ride horses. Because of you, I can ride. I can also do exercising better. When I am riding you, I feel like a professional. The barn was my happy place. After being around the horses and riding them, I can sit up shifts no problem. My handwriting has improved and my hands don't hurt or shake anymore. The best thing about coming to Dreams besides seeing you is getting to see the other volunteers. You have taught me to be confident. Thank you for all you have done for me. The time I've spent at the barn has changed my life forever. Thank you, Nuffy, for helping me exercise and learn more. I love you so much, Philippe. Thank you. Love, Haruka. Love, Noah Foreman. Love, Troy King. Doesn't get much cuter than that. Um, so wanted to share that if anybody is interested in getting involved, um, perhaps you know of military personnel who might enjoy getting involved in our programs, or maybe their children might want to get involved, or perhaps you're looking for a way to get involved. I so appreciate it, Dave, when you mentioned about, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm retired, but I'm not really retired. I, I personally don't believe in retirement, that we all have to stay active. So if you're looking at a way to get involved, you don't have to know anything about horses. Um, we'll be happy to teach you anything you need to know to be around our programs, whether it's around the barns, around these kids, or perhaps helping out in the office. Um, and so we, as we mentioned, we have more than 165 trained volunteers. Every single rider that we support starts with three volunteers. So it does take a village for us to be able to support these participants. Um, so perhaps you wanna get involved as a volunteer, or as I mentioned, we also support groups. Um, as we were talking, I was telling Wynn that if you, sometimes we'll have groups who come out to the farm um, to help with the projects that are never ending. If you have horses, you know, um, there is always stuff to be done. We have now two centers. We've been so busy. Our wait list is more than three years long. Um, and it's just been awful during the pandemic because our phone is ringing off the hook. Um, and so we are anxious to expand. We did open a second center four years ago, um, but it takes not only the space, but it takes the volunteers, it takes the financial support um, to be able to then offer additional hours. So perhaps you want to come to our one of our centers and help us with fence painting or repair, and then we can perhaps get you on the back of a horse as well. Um, so I'd love to answer questions. I just wanted to give you a brief overview. I don't know if there's time left. Yes. Is, is the wait list for participants? Yes, the wait list is for participants over three years long. And it's, um, I actually, um, unfortunately, um, people often ask 
why I started this. Um, and at the time, really, it was an outreach uh, program for my church. Really didn't plan on doing this. Um, however, then six years ago, my youngest child, um, things were just not right with her in school as she was going up through grade school. And we finally were able to get a diagnosis that she had autism. And I have to tell you, that was a very, very dark day. Um, and it was a day when I was desperate to do whatever I could and find whatever support I could for my child to be able to try to follow the path that I had been hoping that she would be able to follow. And so with this three-year wait list of these kids, I know what that feels like for a parent um, to be so desperate. If you hear, wow, we've got, we do truly have kids who will say a word to a horse when otherwise they're completely nonverbal um, and they come and they'll talk to our horse. So to be able to say, I'm really sorry, you have to wait three years uh, at least to be able to get access to this opportunity is just really weighs heavily on our heart. Is that the same with veterans or anybody else? For veterans, no. Veterans, you can come on in. We're, we're ready for you. I have a question uh, online here. Uh, how many head of horses do you have there? Uh, we have 18 program horses and we're looking for more. Our horses are very busy. Where do you get your horses from? Um, we get our horses from all different kinds of places. Um, a lot of them are retired horses. Uh, we live in a pretty vibrant equine community. So we love the tried and true 4-H show horses that have been around the block um, because we do have a lot of stimulus in our barn. Um, and so horses that are pretty calm by nature, um, you know, a lot of those show horses Sometimes we'll find them on Craigslist. Um, a lot of times people are um, just really looking for a way for their horse who's you know, kind of old and their joints are starting to hurt where they might be able to have a little kinder, gentler life and stay involved, so. I was wondering if you're aware of the uh, horse rescue place that's up north of Columbus there. We just brought one in from there. His name is Rocky, and so far he just came out of his two-week quarantine, and so far uh, things are looking great. Yes, I think um, we may be talking about the same place. Uh, I think it's called Reride, where Rocky just came from. We love working with rescue centers. Let me take one over here, and then I'll get right to you. Yes, Wynn? So when you come in, is there a, I get to stay enrolled for six months, or... You know, the kid's getting attached to a horse. How do you say goodbye? Well, that's why our wait list is so long. Um, we do not um, cease supporting any of our participants. And so we have some participants, actually this one young girl, Ava, who I mentioned, um, who came to us at the age of four, completely nonverbal. She was actually the very first picture on my screen. Um, she's been riding with us for now seven years. Um, now she can walk, trot, canter independently. Um, and people like to ask about stories. Um, if, do I have time? Yeah. I'm not checking. Okay. Yeah, um, so Ava, as I mentioned, um, she came to us at the age of four, had never spoken a word, no mama, no dada, nothing. And her mom had heard about equine therapy. And so she, we, we were just around the corner. So she brought Ava to our center. And if we would put halters or the things that you put on a horse's head to lead them, if we would bring out the blue halter instead of the red halter, Ava would lose it. So she was diagnosed on the autism spectrum and she would just flip out, scream. Her mom would have to take her away. So, you know, we're working on balancing when things are different and how you adjust with differences in your life. So then we were able to get her on the back of the horse and we were working on trying to get her to talk to the horse. She wouldn't talk to people. So try to talk to Tater the horse. And within four months, the first word she ever said was to tater the horse. And that word was walk. Uh, within six months, her mom called and she woke up that morning. And for the first time ever, she woke up and said, hi, mom. And her mom just called us and was bawling. She was just crying and crying and crying. So fast forward. Um, Ava really struggled at school. She had to wear those noise canceling headphones when she goes to school. Um, and she actually attended my kid's school, Black Lake Elementary. And um, Ava would, she was struggling reading. And so Heidi would bring her over to the barn and she would, we have a great picture of her sitting and reading her books to her horse. Um, Cora is who I've got the picture of her reading to because she wouldn't read to people. Um, I would take one of our horses to their fundraiser. It's a Strides for Pride walkathon. 
and the, um, uh, the kids would be able to stop by and pet her horse. Ava normally can't participate in this kind of function because it's just too much stimulus for her. However, because the horse was there, Ava would be able to walk a lap and then she didn't even have to touch the horse. She could just be in the vicinity of this horse. And that had such a calming effect on her. Then she could walk a lap and then sit and then walk a lap and then sit. Then our next step was we were asked to support a Special Olympics equestrian team. And we said, of course, we'll be happy to do that. And Ava was one of our first equestrian um, competitors and we go to the statewide competition and she's pretty competitive. And um, when, uh, for year after year, when Ava did not win, at the end of the classes, they put them up on these wonderful award blocks and Ava would absolutely lose it. She wanted to be in that number one and she would scream and cry and we'd actually physically have to remove her. So every year we're practicing with her. Okay, when you don't win, you know, you need to say good job or, you know, you smile and try harder. And every year, you know, we're all poised and ready for the extraction. And so three years into this process and, her, you know, her mom is crying and we're crying because our hearts are breaking and we're really trying to make inroads for Ava. And um, three years, her third year of competition, um, they had lined the athletes up and we knew she was going to be number two. And so we're all around the award stand and they bring her up on the award and she stops at number one and they guide her down to number two. And, you know, we're just ready for all to break loose. And um, they announced this young boy is number one and Ava turns to him and she sticks her hand out and we think, oh my gosh, she's gonna get him. <laughs> and she, but she turns to him and here, you know, just what, five years before she had never said a word. She turns to this young boy and she puts her hand out and she says, congratulations, but I'm going to beat you in the next class. And she did. So, you know, all of what these programs are, whether it is our autism, our therapeutic writing programs, or whether it's our vocational program or our Alzheimer's program, it's not about writing. It's not about learning how to care for the horses. It's about having an opportunity to make inroads into personal growth. Um, we actually filmed a documentary called Affinity with a group up in Cleveland, um, where it talks about how if we could find especially for autism, if you can find that magic key, that path that lets you be able to connect with a person, then you can make some um, really impactful life changes. And these horses are so amazing because they read the nonverbal cues of the people around them. They don't need to be told what's going on inside of Dave. Wow, I can tell that Dave is coming off that school bus. He's one of my high school kids and he's ticked because Bob looked at him funny at his locker and he's gonna hit something. Those horses don't have to talk to Dave. Those horses can read the nonverbal cues and they might turn around in their stall. And our staff can say, Dave, what's going on? You know, I noticed that this horse is turning its back to you. Yeah, that horse is turning its back like every single other person in my life. And I'm so ticked off and da 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 da. You said, Dave, you know what? Take three breaths, just breathe put your hands on this horse bow and breathe. And sure enough, you know it, that horse will turn around and it's gonna engage when he calms down and it gives our staff a chance to say, you know what, next time you're at that locker and this Bobby looks at you funny, just breathe. And the way, if you change how you're interacting with other people, you're gonna be amazed at how that can improve your quality of life and what happens for you at school and at home or at your job. And I'm so sorry, that was a huge answer to his very short sure question. Though. We're ready to go, no. Um, what's, what's the cost for a participant to, to be a part of this program? And where do you get all your revenue? Because horses are not cheap, as I know Alan tells us, they eat like horses. So, uh, <laughs> How, how, I mean, it seems like it's a big operation. It is. Uh, it is a very large operation, and um, that's why I go out and I talk a lot. I love to talk about it, obviously, um, but we do a lot of fundraising. Um, I'm blessed that people have come through the door who have some great skills of this video was a friend of ours up in New Albany who made these videos for us, um, you know, and so to be able to share that word that way, um, my family, I, you know, I hit them up every year, you know, so we do a lot of um, private um, charitable donation requests. Once a year, we send a newsletter out. Um, we do have some corporate sponsors. 
Um, we do little fundraising events. Um, our participants pay half the cost. So when you ask about what is the cost, um, our cost for each student every week is about $90. Um, and so we fundraise half of that. Our military, we lost our sponsor, unfortunately, um, three years ago because it was Oryx Foundation um, and they actually took all of their donation, um, all of their philanthropic giving in-house. And, um, you know, we just kind of close our eyes and pray and look for sponsors. Anheuser-Busch helped us a little bit um, two years ago. Um, and so, you know, it just, we, work hard at trying to find folks where this really resonates. And we, I'm really good at pinching pennies. <laughs> yes. Give us an example of a child. Can you tell us about the military family's experiences and tell a story about that? Oh my gosh, I could even show you one. Oh, it's not, I didn't send it to you, darn it. Okay. Um, so I, we have a beautiful video I'd love to show you at some point where we featured one of these families. Um, they actually found us, um, the Delosiers are their last name, and they found us because of their daughter Madison, who was diagnosed on the autism spectrum. So they found us for a therapeutic writing. Um, and quickly, um, so both um, the husband and wife um, were both military personnel, they're both veterans. Um, and um, got involved in our Friday night programs. And Kat will tell you, uh, that's the wife's name, um, in the Friday night program. So they started the Sidewalkers, got in involved in the Friday night programs in the writing. And that was really a place where they could come and relax a lot of what Kat was struggling with. Um, in this video, she talks about um, this horrible situation where a couple of her team members were killed by, um, oh my gosh, I'm gonna say the wrong thing. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Um, and um, she talks about the hypervigilance and how it's so difficult to go out for a meal um, and where she can come and really just relax around the barn. There's something about the environment of being in this barn with these amazing animals, you know, grooming them, getting on their backs um, and just hanging out where um, it really does help with some of the relaxation um, and um, kind of trying to not only heal herself, but also get reconnected. We found that a lot of our families are coming because there's just a disconnect with communication and relationship. And so they come to the barn and they all ride together. So that's not Friday nights on Saturdays. We do that. Um, and they can come and have fun doing something where they're all bad at it, where sometimes the kids are even better. And then that gives some really great inroads to kind of rebuild some of those relationship connections that we're suffering as a result of the service. So that's an area we're really anxious to continue to grow. Um, we actually have a couple groups from um, Chilla Coffee, uh, VA groups who want to come. They're really focusing on suicide prevention and, um, Without offending everybody, I'm kind of disgusted um, that we have this group who's saying we have these vets who are struggling with, um, you know, suicide concerns, and we think your program would work, but we have absolutely no funds to pay for it. And so we're saying, okay, come, you know, we'll work with you, but you know, shame on the fact that there is no funding available for programs to help our military in this kind of a, a therapy, but. So lots of different opportunities. Other questions? Why horses and not dogs or something? Sure, and that's, um, it's a great question. And really it has to do with the horses, um, their innate nonverbal um, ability to read nonverbal cues. That's how they survive because they're prey animals. And so they're just always on the lookout to read those nonverbal cues. Um, and so that's what really is so powerful. Um, one other quick story, unless everybody's dying to get out of here, um, for autism, um, we had this small group of kids who were coming for this group socialization. These were, um, grade school kids who really are struggling with making friends, communicating. And so we had this group class and all of the kids were standing in the center of this arena. And we had, um, this horse, my horse, actually cactus Jack. Um, and he was loose in the arena and we had two instructors in the center with the kids 
and the kids were super excited. It was after school and, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's so good to see you win. Oh my goodness, I love your best. Oh my gosh, what did you have for dinner tonight? You know, what, da, 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 and you know, chit chatting. And this horse was just ripping it up. He was running all over the place. Um, and so one of the kids said, hey, hey, Miss Rachel, why is this horse being so silly? And so um, this is a practice called equine assisted learning. We do a lot of groundwork where we work with the power, the nonverbal power of a horse um, with experiential learning. And so uh, there's a lot of question and answer. So she said, well, why do you think this horse is being so silly? Well, I think it wants to be outside with his friends or I think it had too much grain for dinner or I think it's because we're being so silly. So what do we wanna do about it? Oh, and so we have, you know, toys and things all around the arena. Well, I, we have pool noodles. I want to chase it with a noodle or I want to turn it out with its friends or, you know what, maybe let's just be quiet. And so they all talked amongst themselves, problem solved, communicated with peers, and they decided they were going to stand and be quiet. And sure enough, they just stopped and they stood there and like this, Cactus Jack stopped. He looked over at the group and he walked over to the center of the arena and he stood there with his head in in the center with this group. What a great opportunity to be able to talk about how our actions impact how other people are acting around us. And if you change how you're acting, it can change how they're responding to you. Those real time lessons, um, especially for kids who can't kind of extrapolate, um, you can't talk about it in theory, you need to feel it and live it. Um, that power of a horse is extraordinary. <laughs> All right, fantastic presentation again. Thank you very much for coming to speak to us. Um, if you didn't learn something, I don't know how you couldn't. This is just fascinating information. All right. Um, oh, I'm going script. Do you have my script? Oh, I did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just a robot. Like, there you oh, go. Yeah. I need mean, input. There we go. All right. Um, so, yes, great program. But our program next week will be a presentation from Jake Diebler. I think I'm pronouncing that correct. He's the assistant coach from the Ohio State University basketball team. Um, and so the. We won a basketball game. Yeah, he, um, he was the coach the last game. I got assistant coach, but he was the actual coach. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't know anything about basketball. <laughs> um, but so he's going to give us an update on the OSU basketball uh, program. And I may or may not have been told that LeBron James will be making an appearance. So be sure to, uh, to attend to find out. Listen to what I said. I may or may not have been told. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, before we wrap up, we have a wrap. We do. But we don't have a very big Okay. Seven dollars in a pot. I won't send you a ten ninety nine. Okay, it's six 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 three three seven. Three three seven. Oh, bro. Oh, she oh, said I never win. And she said I never win. Yes, I never win. You still win. Right. 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 At the end, six, 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 six. Very, very always good. Yeah. But he won't pull the eggs. He might. <laughs> I can't win because nobody would sign the check. <laughs> nine and nine. Nine and nine. nine. <laughs> so good. Yay. Thanks for playing. <laughs> All right. And now, before we adjourn, I believe it's time for the four way test. Your left this time, I set it up wrong. It's just different, it's not wrong. Okay. All right. <laughs> of the things we think, say, and do, first is the truth. truth. Second is the fair to all concerned. Third, will we'll 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 and fourth, will we'll 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 Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. We are adjourned. All right. All right.